Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and in this video I'll teach you everything you need to know about exporting your models from Blender to Unreal Engine 5 with materials and how to set everything up. Let's go! So first of all we need to make sure that our model is ready for export. Now since Unreal Engine 5 is using Nanite technology we don't really have to bother with converting our model into game asset. So you could go ahead and you know create themes, unwrap it, optimize it, you know export it and all that. But to be honest you don't have to if you don't want to because converting an object into Nanites is a one click deal in Unreal Engine so who cares. So in this video we're gonna focus more on exporting and uh, creating materials for our model in Bla in Unreal Engine 5 because that's uh, you know that's the cool part of it right optimization you can always do that on your own and if you need some guidance we have an extensive course on it called Game Asset 2.0 so if you don't have it grab it it's fantastic and it will teach you everything you need to know about creating game assets in Blender if you're a complete beginner I mean absolute beginner I would really recommend grabbing our our free course jumpstart hard service in blender link is in the video description it's free for this particular example we're gonna be using this camera which is high poly it's 200k tris and uh, to be honest I don't care because like I said converting to nanites is just a one click and uh, you can convert any static mesh in Unreal Engine into nanites and the poly count becomes absolutely irrelevant as long as you can texture your model properly second thing we need to do is we need to decide whether we want to export our model in parts so you know as several objects or one object now I would recommend to actually merge everything into one object because it's more manageable and exporting it this way but you know it's up to you so if you do not combine everything into one object and you're gonna export multiple elements they're gonna be imported into Unreal as separate elements uh, so when you move one the other is gonna stay in place you know so it can be a bit confusing and difficult to to work with which is why I suggest combining everything together now when you're combining things together in Blender you can do it in two ways so one of them is gonna be by booleans union booleans and the other one is just ctrl j which is basically merging all the pieces into one object right there is a one uh, issue with combining everything into one object and i want to show you this right now so let's just grab a cube regular cube okay and we're gonna apply to this cube a very soft bevel so q and bevel and you know like let's say quite a few segments 15 is fine and then we're going to duplicate this cube make it smaller and we're gonna make the bevel smaller okay so now we have uh, one element with tiny bevel and one element with larger bevel now when I'm gonna combine them together with ctrl J this large bevel is gonna be forced onto this small cube and you can see that it's overshooting because it's simply too big so when I'm gonna go to Q, bevel and Z, you can see that my bevel is literally overshooting itself here, right? Now what I could do is select them um, in a different order. So select the big cube first and the small one second, and then the small bevel is gonna be forced on the big cube. Problem with this method is that you may end up with some geometry that's gonna be overshooting on itself. So I had this larger bevel on this object being forced onto the screws. And I'm not gonna be fixing this because I can't be bothered, but I just wanted to illustrate the problem. So the way around it would be to select your all your objects and duplicate them. So you know, select everything, right? And then Shift D to duplicate them and basically create a new collection in Blender and create a backup collection, right? So then you can actually go destructively on bevels, and what you can do is you can select an object, Control A, Visual to Mesh, Control A, Visual to Mesh. And now you got bevels applied to your geo. So now when you combine them together, and the size is gonna stay the same because they have different bevels applied to them before combining. So this is what I would suggest you do. Now the last problem with combining everything is Control J is that some elements gonna have um, gonna occupy the same space in 3D, creating a bit of a Z fighting. But mostly they're gonna be hidden somewhere, you know, somewhere like inside here, because technically. You know what I could do is select this object Control L, and you know I could detach it. So see, there's a face inside here, and these two faces gonna be sort of you know literally occupying the same space, right? So you're gonna have some errors when you're gonna be importing to Unreal. You could remove these faces if you want to, but quite frankly, I, it just doesn't matter. So it's fine. 
So with all that said, let's have a look at our materials. We have five mats going on this model. We got the base mat, which is this gray here. Then we have the gray bright, which is for the accents, the small elements. And then we have the gray dark, which is, uh, you know, this one. And then we have glass inside here and emissive, so the light. So we have five mats, yeah? So we have one object and five mats. Now, I want you to pay attention to the names. So base mat, gray bright, uh, gray bright, gray dark, glass and light. And um, we're going to be able to export this model with the same names and the mods uh, to Unreal Engine, which is why we don't need to unwrap it. And we do not need any ID maps. Uh, we're going to be able to texture this directly in Unreal Engine, which bypasses the whole, you know, substance painter, marmoset and baking bullshit, which just takes a lot of time. So if you don't have to do it, don't do it. All right, let's talk about exporting now. You have two ways of exporting this from Blender to Unreal. One of them is manual, which basically you select an object, you go to uh, FBA export. So I'm going to press Ctrl S with machine tools. That's a pie menu for machine tools, by the way. I have a massive tutorial on machine tools, so go ahead and watch it. If you don't know how to use machine tools, it's a free add-on. And um, this is a save pie from machine tools which allows me to very quickly ex um, access the export options. So click here on export and I have this object selected. Um, so I'm going to be exporting selected objects only. Now, the only thing you need to change for the FBX export is go to Geo and switch to smoothing from normals only to face. That's essential. OK, and then you export. Otherwise, you might end up with some shading problems in Unreal Engine. OK and that's it so we're good to go here and we have all these mats and you have an fba exported and you could just import it manually to unreal engine you can just drag and drop it into unreal engine it's that easy okay now i'm gonna be exporting it differently i'm gonna be using automatic exports and i have a separate video on how to set this up because you have to set a few things up before you can able before you are able to do that but I have a video on that, so go ahead and watch it, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it right now. So, um, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, this object to my export collection. So, um, and export, and I'm going to open Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so, I'm going to launch my Unreal Engine 5, and I'm going to create a new project. There we go. Go to Games, and let's create Blank. And we're going to create a, um, my project 4. That's fine. And we're going to uncheck the starter content. I don't really need it. And we're going to uh, install. I mean, we're going to create a folder on desktop for this project. And I'm just simply going to click on create. So now in order to be able to import automatically from Blender to Unreal Engine, we need to do one thing, which is go to edit uh, project settings and type here Python. And here under enable remote execution, just take this uh, box here to enable it and you're good to go. Now go to Blender and go to Pipeline Export Send to Unreal. It's going to take a few minutes, um, well, a few seconds really. Uh, Blender is going to do its thing and export to Unreal. And now you can see this error I've talked about. So I've mentioned this, right? So uh, the um, camera has some nearly zero tangents, which can create some issues. This is basically Z fighting between the planes or geometry that occupies the same space in 3D space. So you can just clear that and ignore it, okay? And now our object was imported here with all the materials. So if you do not see this content drawer, you can press Control space to bring it up, okay? So Control sp space to bring it up. I'm gonna close it to show you how to dock it. So Control space and literally dock in layout and you're done. So our model is going to be here under Untitled Asset. So double click that and you'll see your object. You can drag it here to the scene, zoom out with your mouse and, um, you know, and there, there it is. Now, we also have all these mods here. So if I'm going to switch here to details, you'll be able to see that we have our object and we have all the mods and the names are exactly the same. So we know exactly which mod is responsible for which slot which is brilliant. So that's all we need. Now, let me show you very quickly how to navigate the scene. 
First of all, we're gonna clean these uh, widgets here. So press G to clean them up, to hide them. You can always bring them back. We don't need them. Now, the way you all navigate here is you uh, hold middle mouse button to um, pan, right mouse button to look around, holding right mouse button W, S, A, D, and then click on the object, press F to focus, Alt, left click and hold, and you can rotate around. Now I'm going to be uh, changing the lighting a little bit because you can see that the lighting is quite, I mean, the sun is quite low in the horizon, meaning the Kelvin temperature of the light is quite low. So the light is really warm, probably around 4,000 or even less. Uh, so uh, we need to move the sun a bit higher. So the color of this uh, material here is going to change a little bit because light affects colors of your mats greatly. In, for example, if you look here, uh, there is a very flat lighting here. If I'm going to go to render and go to film and uncheck transparency, you can see that our lighting is very flat, it's very bluish, it's overcast, which is why um, the color of this camera is so gray. Uh, whereas here in Unreal Engine, um, it's quite warm because the light is warm and gray color uh, can actually inherit any type of color. So we quite often use gray background in photography because gray can become white, black, or any color. And that's the power of gray. So here what we're gonna do is gonna hold Control L, which will create like a widget. And we're going to move the sun a little bit higher on the horizon. You see like the color changes from really warm to really cold. So this is a bit colder. Maybe that's a little bit too high. Cool, so we have sun set up uh, here. Let me just actually move it a little bit to the front. Ah, that, that's better. So we can see the front. And uh, we have our camera with all the colors except for glass and emission because these we have to recreate in Unreal Engine. And I will show you how to do this. So now uh, let's actually uh, talk about our interface because if you need to Unreal, you may be a bit confused. So on the right hand side here, we have all the details. Um, this is world and this is details of whatever you have selected. And here in the bottom, we have our object with all the mats. If you double click any of these mats, you will be able to see uh, kind of like a shader editor in Blender with notes. They're very similar and we're going to be working with these nodes. So before we start doing anything, let's actually save our world map. So let's just go here and click on the save. And we're going to title camera, camera and we can save it to content. So save and we're going to have our file saved. Okay. So now when you want to recover your, um, your file, you go to content and literally just double click this camera map and it's gonna open whatever you have in here. So first of all, let's talk about basics of mats, okay? Double click this, and like I said, this works just like uh, mats in, you know, like a nodes in Blender. Uh, so let me, uh, let me show you. Now nodes in Unreal Engine work with shortcuts, so I can right click here, and instead of typing constant one, two, three, I can simply hold key one, two, or three, and I can recall that node. So if I'm gonna press four and click, I'm going to get a constant. Now it looks a bit different than this one, but if I right click and convert to parameter, you will see I'm going to get exactly the same note. Uh, so this is how you can recreate this color note. And now if I double click here, I'm going to be able to change the color of this material, make it a bit brighter and, you know, a bit more colorful. And I'm going to click OK. And we have this kind of a reddish, you know, reddish tone here. So um, that's how you do that. Now, um, we're going to um, be actually adding a few more notes here because we need to actually specify whether this material is metallic and or not or how rough it is. So now to control metallic and roughness values, we need to add a simple constant which controls one value. So I can either right click and type constant or I can just simply hold one and click and this will add a very simple note which controls literally one value. So when I connect it to metallic, you'll see here, I can only control and change one value. So when I tap one, it will convert this mat into metallic. When I tap zero, it's gonna be non-metallic because um, you know it's either one or zero, okay? Now in terms of roughness, um, it can be between zero and one, and we're in between. So uh, if I'm going to uh, press one and click, I'm gonna add the same note. 
You can also duplicate this node by clicking and pressing Ctrl D, but it will also copy the value, so be careful. Cl um, clamp it here to roughness and double click here and 0 0.5, okay, 0 0.5. Now you can see our metal is slightly less shiny, I mean less matte, you can make it completely a shiny by uh, typing 0, and you know, it's going to be like chrome. Let's just go 0. Actually, 0 0.5 is fine, okay? Now, I'm going to collapse this a little bit, and you see that nothing has changed, and the reason for that is because we need to compile the material, meaning we need to apply these changes to the material so it can be reflected in the scene. So you have to click on Apply, and now it's been applied to the scene, okay? So we can collapse this. And the same way, we can change all the other masks. Now, you don't really need to... You know, you don't really need to add all these va uh, all these nodes manually. You can just Control C, copy them from this material, and add them to other mats. So gray bright, double click, Control V, connect metal to metal, and let's say roughness to roughness, and uh, we're going to apply that and collapse it, and then we have one more, which is gray dark. And this one actually could be rubberish or kind of like plasticish, so metallic. We could switch the value here to zero, okay? And this one uh, could be quite rough, so it's gonna be more of like a rubber or something, okay? So we could go here with like 0 0.8, right? And we can make it a bit darker, right? So slightly darker, okay? And apply. Cool, and let's just collapse this. And you see that now we have all these values applied to our mesh. Now I'm gonna change this color here because I'm not sure if I want it to be reddish, I want it to be, you know, gray. So let's just uh, make this gray and maybe notice, notice, uh, notice dark and apply that. And also here, um, I want this mud here to be maybe less dark as well, so kind of, you know, less crazy, okay? And let's just apply it, all right? Cool, so we're good to go. Now let's create glass because that's interesting. So in order to create glass, we need to do a few things. Uh, first of all, you need to notice that um, normally materials in Unreal Engine come as opaque, and you can see it in here uh, by clicking this node, okay? And you can see here that and the material is opaque, we need to change it to translucent. Now, um, by doing so, we're not done yet, we need to fix a few values. First of all, we lost the metallicness and roughness. We need to bring it back, otherwise our glass is going to look a bit plasticish. So we're going to scroll down here to this lighting value and, I mean lighting mode, and we're going to switch to uh, this surface transparency volume, and we're going to get our nodes back. Uh, Control V to uh, bring them back and these copied nodes and plug in uh, this node to metallic to make this metallic which will make it a bit more uh, looking like a glass and then we're going to plug into roughness here and we're going to change roughness to maybe something like 0 0.1 and we need also change the opacity because at the moment it's fully opaque and we need to change it to translucent so uh, let's copy that, Control D, that node, and plug it here to Opacity. And we're going to change the value here of the Opacity to 0. maybe 0. 0.3 or something, okay? And now you can start seeing that we get something similar to glass. Maybe actually 0. 0.2 is going to be fine. Let's remove the saturation from this to... Uh, maybe let's make it a bit bluish, maybe, okay? And press OK and press Apply, okay? So now we have this kind of a glass material. Now the problem with this glass is that it's not really a proper glass yet. Let me show you. So I'm going to go here to the top menu and I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to add a sphere. I'm going to move this here by grabbing this widget. You can, by the way, change these widgets in here or by using shortcuts uh, W for move, R for scale and E for rotation. So let's go to R for scale, and when you're going to hover in the middle here, you can highlight all of these at the same time, which will enable you to click and drag and scale all of them at the same time. So it's going to scale uniformly. If you don't do that, you're going to make a yo-yo. Uh, let's just drag this glass here 
um, so we can apply it here and now I am going to show you that there are no distortions whatsoever when we're looking through this faker glass and that just doesn't look realistic so what we need to do we need to add a few more nodes here to make this realistic okay so what we need to do is we need to actually take care of this refraction node so what we're going to do is we're going to add the lerp node which will allow us to connect two nodes together so press l and click on lerp node which will allow us to add the lerp node here and here we're going to add the fresnel node so right click and type here uh, fresnel uh, it's spelled with s and we're gonna need one more of these nodes so Control d okay we're gonna uh, plug in this fresnel to alpha and we're gonna plug in this value to a and this is gonna be our ior which stands for index of refraction okay and for unreal engine the correct number for index of refraction for glass is 1.52 and you can actually check it in documentation so 1.52 and we're going to plug it into refraction and now when i'm going to apply this this should actually properly work as a glass now now you're talking so now you get these lovely distortions so let's delete that by pressing delete and uh, we're going to see a really nice glass here on our camera you can make it darker or brighter now when you want to change these settings here you're always gonna have to use apply which is a little bit annoying so what we can do is we can actually create material instance now in order to create material instance uh, we need to actually convert some of these into parameters okay so convert it to constant and then to parameter and then name it so we're going to rename it to color uh, so it's gonna be glass color this is gonna be uh, metalness okay this is gonna be roughness and this is gonna be opacity right you could technically also add the refraction here so IOR right now we're going to apply this okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, right click that and we're going to create a material instance i underscore glass and then we know it's an instance and now we can drag it to the glass much so this is a master mat right now this is an instance so now when i'm going to open that i can on the fly change all the values when i'm going to enable them so let's enable all the values here and you got sliders instead of nodes okay so you can just go here and do whatever you want and you can see it's changing um you know on the fly right so it's changing on the fly you can change the opacity you know make it more opaque and whatever the hell you want okay so let's just uh, go with a blue okay you know blue color maybe make it a bit darker and maybe up the roughness to something like 0 0.3 and uh you know and close it and you're good to go okay so we got our glass now let's take care of the light okay so double click this and now lighting is a little bit different because we're not going to be working with base color we're going to be working with emission now to um, make this um, light emissive okay because even if i plug it in here it will not work so you can make it you know really bright and it's just not going to be emissive um, by the way if you want to disconnect one of these nodes hold alt and click and if I'm going to apply this here, and so I apply this, uh, and it's just not a massive, it's just yellow, okay? So in order to make this a massive, what we need to do is to multiply the value of this. Now, so we need another value node, uh, which means hold one and click. So hold one and click here, and we need a multiply node. So press M and click to add a multiply node, and we're going to plug this in here, and plug this one in here, and plug this one to emission. And we're going to multiply it by, I don't know, 30. Boom, and that's your emission. And let's apply this. And we got our, you know, emissive mat. So now you got camera with a glass and emissive mat in Unreal Engine 5. Now let's make this a bit more interesting and push it a step further. So let's just save this and we can move on. So now let's say that, um, you know, uh, you wanted to make this material, well, less perfect, you know, kind of like uh, with maybe some bumps and damages and whatnot, okay? Well, we can very easily do that by adding materials through Quixel Mixel Bridge. 
in Unreal Engine 5, Quixel Mixlet Bridge is built into your Unreal Engine. So when you go here, okay, and you click on the second option from the top, you will see Quixel Mixlet Bridge. And if you don't see anything, means you need to sign in. You sign in by clicking in here and you can log in through Epic Games account, okay? And once you do that, you can use all the assets available to you with this plugin. So here uh, we can actually type, for example, metal and enter and you have access to all the metals um, you know that are available in this in this plugin so let's just keep scrolling down and see what we have in here well, this one will be interesting right kind of like a really dirty you know dirty metal or kind of like a paneled metal or you know kind of like a this kind of a metal or even like that um, so we could uh, click on that right and then you need to download the, uh, the material to your uh, unreal engine so you can choose quality in here it's 1k 2k 4k and 8k i think medium is fine and you click on download unreal engine is going to download it and then you simply click on plus and you're done and you got the mud here in your viewport and you can literally drag and drop it to you know to whichever slot you want and this is going to be a bit stretched now i'm wondering if this is not caused by either the uvs because it's not unwrapped really or by the scale problem because so let's go here and let's go to uh item and let's check the scale now scale is uniform so what we can do is you know go to edit mode and right click and we can just unwrap it so eu and smart uv project okay and then we can re-export it so we can go to pipeline export and send to unreal and this might fix our problem with the stretching i wonder if it does so let's see let's hope unreal will not crash and this indeed fixed our problem so you see how easy that is now you're gonna get some seams and all that in areas that you don't want to but you know i just use the automatic unwrap so you don't have to do it if you don't want to but you, you see this that's easy guys it's really that easy right now okay so let's bring this mod back in here now we can do uh, something really cool we don't have to apply this whole mod what we can do is just grab some of the maps so let's click here and shift click here Control c go back to content and go to our model here under content now if you cannot find your model in the content area here what you can do is uh, click on the uh, object in your scene and click on this folder here it's going to open a folder where this object is located okay so now um uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click here and Control v to paste these maps here and now we can double click this mat and we can literally drop these maps into our mat that's how easy that is okay so we can grab these mats uh let's say the normal map and we can grab uh, let's say this map and we can use them as different maps so now clearly you can see we have two maps here right so we're going to plug in this normal to normal now before we do that let's double click that map and check if rgb is in checked in here now fortunately unreal engine knows how to read these maps and you can see here there's normal and no rgb is checked which is correct so uh, we don't need to save this we can just double click this map here and plug this to normal and this will give us a little bit of a of a bump at least shoot so we're gonna apply this and you will see that we're gonna get this nice bump and you can even use this map for roughness okay so we could just grab the blue channel and plug it into roughness and try this and you see that's gonna be really reflective right now so boom you're gonna get this kind of material which is kind of interesting so you can do a lot of stuff with uh with these maps here so the last thing i'm going to show is how easy it is con to convert your model into nanites uh, you just simply right click and nanites and enable and it's going to convert it to nanites and when you zoom out it's going to be you know less dense and when you're going to zoom in it's going to be more dense and if you want to turn it off you simply disable and pff, you're done so that's how it works guys you know and that's that's all the philosophy here nothing else to it so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video it's just a quick and dirty introduction to how very easily you can drop your objects into your models into unreal and kind of preview them you know without this whole process of unwrapping optimizing which can take hours for complicated objects you can drop anything in here you want and it's gonna work and again 
if you add some changes to uh, in Blender, like I showed you, we unwrap this object, you know, uh, it's going to be reflected in the in real time. So if I, for example, grab this face here and, you know, I extruded it and I wanted to export this to Unreal Engine, it's going to be reflected um, immediately in the viewport and uh, and boom, there's your new object. So this is how easy this is, guys. Yeah. So let me just repair this here, go back and re-export this pipeline, export, send to Unreal, wait for this to finish and, uh, and you're done. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching and I see you in the next one.